So during the planning and preparation stage, one of the most important things that the teacher has to be thinking about is their destination. Where are you going? Where are you guiding the students to? And in that sense, it could be for one lesson or for a series of lessons, or as you become a more experienced teacher, it could also be over the whole semester or over the whole three-year program that you are a part of. Once you've thought about uh, the destination and where you're going, you want to constantly keep the students in your mind so that you are thinking about the specific group of students that you are teaching. In that sense, we want to be mindful of what we call student engagement. How are you going to be able to engage that particular group of students? What, for example, is their background knowledge? Have you assessed their needs and recognized uh, where they are at in terms of being beginner, intermediate, advanced? Have you assessed the needs within the class? How many levels do you have in a particular class? And how wide apart are those levels? As you begin to plan more uh, in more detail for each lesson, you want to be thinking about the cognitive capacity of the learners, as well as for every activity that you teach, the cognitive load that each activity is going to take up. As you set out to plan, you will naturally be thinking about the resources that you have at your disposal. And in particular, the kinds of authentic materials or materials that might be used for native speakers that you can integrate and increase the student engagement in a lesson. Authentic materials these days can easily be found online where you can find uh, samples of brochures or want ads or magazine articles or pictures with captions. So they're a great way to really modernize your lessons. As you continue to develop that lesson, another thing that must constantly be in your mind is the variety that you want to build into your lesson. By variety, you want to be thinking about the multiple intelligences and making sure that the activities that you're suggesting appeal to all of them. And for short, I sometimes call multiple intelligences the MIs. Sounds a bit like a spy movie. The MIs. You also want to be thinking about Bloom's taxonomy and how difficult or easy the questions that you're asking your students are and making sure that the lesson is not too low a level or not too high a level. A beginner teacher needs to have those questions prepared in advance. A more experienced teacher is likely to be able to come up with those questions which appear to be spontaneous but in fact may be remembered from many previous times having taught that. As you decide about the activities that you're going to do, you want to chunk them into seven plus or minus two units. And that's Miller's magical number. And Miller, as we know, has told us how much uh, the memory can hold at any one period of time. So seven plus or minus two is going to help you divide your lesson into uh, small chunks. Then you want to be thinking about the sequencing of those chunks and finally the pacing of those chunks. And by pacing it means how long do you think each chunk is going to take to teach and uh, making sure that you've got enough for one lesson and always a few extra activities just in case and never not enough for a lesson. Overall, throughout your planning and preparation, you want to use as much of the target language as possible. And you just have to remember, it takes time. And a beginner teacher is going to take more time.